Welcome back to the second lesson in our patterns unit. The focus of this particular lesson is going to be to learn two things. We're going to learn about what variables are. That's this word here, variables. And we're going to learn how to take information from some sort of a pattern and turn it into an expression. That's the second part here. Now, before we do anything, we got to know what these words mean. I'm going to start from top to bottom. A value is a known amount. Any number that you know what it is, let's say I say I've got five marbles in my hand. Let's say I've got five marbles. That five, I know what it is. So it is a value. It is a known amount. Five marbles. A variable is the exact opposite. Let's say I'm holding some marbles in my hand and I'm not telling you what they are. I'm just keeping them secret. I know how much they are, but you have no idea. Now it is an unknown value. And unknown values are called variables. And we use letters to represent them. So since it is a mystery amount of marbles in my hand, we can use the letter M for mystery or M for marbles. Or maybe you like the letter X. X is used a lot. This is not multiplication, this X. This simply stands for some missing mystery value. Or maybe you like to use the letter A or the letter W. It doesn't matter. Pick a letter and have it represent that mystery amount. That is called a variable. A constant is a number that does not change. It increases or decreases the value of an expression. So, let's say I start with my mystery amount of marbles. And then I tell you I'm adding five more. I'm not telling you how much I was holding to start with, but I'm telling you I'm going to add five more. That would be like saying, take the mystery marbles and add five more to them. That amount, because it is increasing the amount of marbles in my hand, that is called a constant. Constant. If it was minus five, it would be decreasing and it would still be a constant. Numerical coefficient is the number that multiplies the variable. So let's go back to that mystery amount of marbles. And let's say I double them. That would be times two. This is two times my mystery amount of marbles that I'm holding in my hand. I take out my other hand and I say I've got an equal amount in them. And I'm still not telling you how much I'm holding. But what you do know is I've doubled the amount. Mr. M, where's, uh, where's the time sign? You said you're multiplying by two. Where's that time sign? Let me tell you something. If you don't see a sign between two numbers, we are multiplying them. We have a two and an M. There is no symbol between them. That means multiplication. Get used to that from now on. And this is called the numerical coefficient because it is multiplying the variable. Now, an expression is a single number. This is the last one. A single number. Or, so this is a single number. Five. I got five marbles. That is an expression. Or it could be a variable. Let's say M. That is an expression. So it's a single number, it is a variable, or a combination of operations. Like M plus 5. That is got um, a combination of these two with an addition sign in between them. That is also an expression. We can have multiplication. Let's say we have the 2M. Double the mystery amount. That is also an expression. The key thing is expressions do not have equal signs. I'm not telling you 2M equals to anything. I'm just saying 2M. Right. Let's move on to this. Let's apply some of these things here that we've just learned. It says three employees work at the food bank. How many employees? Three. Every day some volunteers arrive to help out. Do we know how many volunteers? No. Write an expression. What is an expression for the number of people working at the food bank? Every one of these problems, ladies and gentlemen, has some mystery value. It is not marbles. In this case, it is some volunteers. How about we pick the letter V? V for volunteers. We don't know how many there are, but we know there's some and they're coming. Now look at this three here. Three people work at that place. That number does not change. And then some more come to help out. Plus, some more volunteers. This could be 20 volunteers. It could be 80. It could be 60. Every day is going to be a different day. So we can say this as 3 
plus V. Or we could say volunteers plus three. Doesn't matter the order, it's addition, right? Who cares? Just flip the order, it's the same thing. Hey, what's two plus three? Five, what's three plus two? Does order matter? No. So we've got now this or that is the expression. Now, what is the value of the constant? What's a constant? It's the number that increases or decreases the value of an expression. In this case here, the constant is a three. That increases the amount and it never changes. So this is my constant. Because that's key here. The constant does not change. But Mr. Melham, uh, what about the volunteers? Do they change? Yeah, every day you're going to get a different amount of volunteers, but these three people never change. They always work at that place. So they are the constant. Here's another pattern. We got toothpicks. Write an expression for the perimeter of a triangle. So we've got the perimeter of the triangle in this pattern in relation to the base. So we've got perimeter versus base. We got to compare them. So let's start doing this. The base here is one. We can almost even make a chart. We can say the base is one. Let's just write it like this. Base is one. The perimeter is three. Here the base is two. So let's write B equals two. And perimeter is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we've got the base is three. And the perimeter is three, six, nine. Hmm. What's going on here? What's the relationship between the base and the perimeter? Let's see here. We're adding two. This is adding four. This is adding six. Okay. But you know what? It's got to be the same pattern over and over again. You can't add two here and then decide to add four there and say, hey, that's a pattern. I mean, it is, but it's not what we're talking about here. It's got to be the same repeatable expression. You know what works? How about if you triple times three? And you triple this one, triple the base, and triple that base. You triple three, you get nine. You triple two, you get six. So how about we take the base and we triple it? Um, Mr. M, isn't triple mean times three? Uh-huh. Um, Mr. M, where's the time sign? Good question. Remember, when you have the two numbers side by side, you don't need a time sign. We know it's multiplication. If you don't see a symbol, that is three times the base. That makes our, that's the relationship here. Sandy is sharing some grapes equally among four friends. What is an expression for the number of grapes each friend gets? So what do we know? Do we know how many grapes she is sharing? No. What do we do? Call it G. It's a mystery number of grapes, and she is sharing them among her four friends. Sharing means what? Division. So we can take the grapes and divide them by four. That's an expression. We can write it like a fraction. That looks like a nine. It's not a nine. We can write G over four. It's the same idea. It's an expression. Now, look. Back to this one here. I forgot something. What do we call that three? Oh, Mr. M, what was it again? It was the numerical coefficient. It's the number that multiplies the variable. So let's write numerical coefficient. And on this one here, what do we got? You know what? Let's not worry too much about this one here with naming these things. I don't want to confuse you. Let's move on to the next one. Tyrone's family is entering a fishing contest. Don't worry about these division ones. Tyrone's family is entering a fishing contest. Do we know how many of the family are entering? No. Five of her family do not catch fish. Five do not catch any fish. How many of her family members do catch fish? Let me ask you something. Do we know how many people are in the family? It doesn't say. So how about we choose the letter F? F for family. Out of those family members, all of them, there could be like a whole bunch of them. I'll draw them as stick people. However many there are, there could be a whole bunch. There could be 20. It could be 30. I don't know how many, but however many they are, we're going to call it F. 
and five of them do not catch fish, that means we're going to minus them out. Three, four, five. And whoever's left over is going to be the ones who do catch the fish. So we're going to write the family members minus five. That's my expression for those who catch fish. What's the minus five represent? The constant. Right. Because it decreases the value of my, it decreases the amount of my original value. I start with whatever amount and I decrease it. That is a constant. How about here? A group of students are talking between classes. Do we know how many students? No. How about we call it S? That's some mystery amount of students talking between their classes. At their lockers, they're hanging out. Two of the friends leave the group. Oh, minus two. What is an expression for the number in the group after the friends leave? Well, we just did it. It's S minus two. Label the parts. Well, we got this here as a variable. We've got the minus two is a constant because it doesn't change and it decreases the amount. Let's move on to this one. You walk into a store to buy four boxes of cereal. Okay, so we know how many boxes we're buying. One is What is the expression for the cost of four boxes of cereal? Well, how much is one box going to cost me? Oh, I don't know. How about we call it D for dollars? So we can call D, this could be dollars. Or price. We can even say P for price. I kind of like P better. How about if I take the price and I times it by four since I'm buying four boxes? Wouldn't that make sense? Yes. So we're going to take the price and we're going to times it by four. There, four P, four times P. Um, Mr. M, I think I'm getting this now. Uh, there's no sign in between them. Does that mean I'm multiplying? Yes, that's what it means. It means I'm multiplying because there's no sign between them. It's four multiplied by P and that's my expression. Let me ask you here. Label the parts. That's a variable. Go ahead and label that. And that four is going to be a coefficient. Right. Go back and look at that definition. So in summary, let's take a look at what we've learned. We've learned that any letter can be used and any letter can be used to represent a variable. Any letter. We also learned, so you can pick like W, you can pick S, you can pick T, you can pick V, you can pick X, whatever you want to pick. Expressions give us a simple, quick way to describe a pattern. Remember in the last lesson where we had to write sentences out? This is way cooler. You don't have to write sentences, you write numbers and letters. So here's some examples. We have things like coefficient. I'll just write coef. We have variables. Those are my letters. I'll write VAR. I've got another variable over here and this baby here, that's called what? Right. It's called a, yes, a constant. Now the trick to writing a pattern as an expression, writing a pattern as an expression is first choose your variable. All the questions we did today, we chose a variable and then tell me what it represents. So in the last one here, I wrote P is price. Here, S, I should say S is students. Student numbers. Okay, and you should do that every time. Get in the habit of doing that. And then describe the pattern using a variable, numbers, or operations. Ah!